Hello, welcome to the Encouraging Word of today. Today is Tuesday. It is uh, December the 12th. We're going to pick up here in the wonderful and encouraging Word of God. And as we're doing, picking up in Mark chapter 14 and verse 32 this morning, but not forgetting verse 31, but he spake the more vehemently, If I should die with thee, I will not deny thee in any way. Likewise also said they also. All the disciples have said, We're willing to die for you, Jesus don't worry, we got your back. If everybody else in the whole world turns for you, don't you worry, we won't. And then the Bible says, verse 32, And they came to a place which was named Gethsemane. And this is the Garden of Gethsemane. And, uh, and he said unto his disciples, Sit ye here while I shall pray. And he taketh with him Peter and James and John, and began to be sore amazed and to be very heavy. And he said unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful unto death. Jesus is, 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 is taking on now the pressure and the reality of what is going to be his betrayal, his, his mockery trials, his crucifixion and his, his, cruci I mean his, um, his crucifixion and his nailing him to that cross and, and, and having to give up his life for us, for our sin, but to suffer greatly for what he's going to fix him to do. He's fixing to suffer un tremendous suffering that we might have salvation and he's saying to his disciples he says please come and sit with me and watch watch for me please watch with me i got i need to go pray to the father i need to go spend time and prepare and get ready now listen to how heavy this is for the lord jesus christ and he went forth a little and he fell on the ground and he prayed that if it were possible the hour might pass from him and he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me, nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou wilt. And so he's there praying and pouring out his heart before God the Father. The other, other gospel writers tell us that he's pouring sweat drops of blood out of the pores of his skin because he's in such torment over the, over the, the agony and the pain and the suffering that he's fixing to go through, not only physically, but spiritually, he knows he's fixing to have to cry out on that cross soon and very soon. Oh, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? It's a, a horrible moment he's, he's going to have to go through. And, and all that spiritual fervor that all those disciples had, we will never deny you. We will never know the whole world deny you. And he said, well, listen, just come and watch with me. Will you watch with me? And he went and prayed. And he went and prayed. And listen to what the Bible says. And he cometh. And he findeth them sleeping. They're supposed to be what? Watching. And they're sleeping. He says, you won't even stay awake. Much less stand up for me. You won't even stay awake. What a sad tragedy. It's a sad tragedy. It really is. And he says, And he cometh, he find them sleeping. And he said unto them, Peter, Simon, he uses both his names, Sleepest thou? Couldest not thou watch one hour? Could you not? Could you not stay up for me and watch for me for one hour? Really? Watch ye and pray. So don't just sit there. Hey, listen, get involved. Don't just do nothing. If you'll pray, pray with me. Pray, pray. Seek the face of God too. Because he says, watch ye and pray. At least ye enter into temptation. The spirit truly is ready, but the flesh is weak. And I tell you what, if we don't get to living in the spirit more than in the flesh, this is going to come to us too. The time is going to come that we should have been watching and we're going to be sleeping. I believe that time is now. I believe that we should be watching diligently for the Lord Jesus Christ. He's going to come back. He's going to find a lot sleeping. They weren't committed. They weren't living by the Spirit. They were living by the flesh. This is the key for us living today. We better get to living in the Spirit more than the flesh because he's going gonna, gonna, he's gonna to show up and we're going to have been caught sleeping. We're not worried. We're not praying. We're not, we're not doing what he's told us to do. And all that he's willing to do for us, and, and we won't simply do what the little things he asks. And he went away again. And prayed and spake the same words. And he returned and he found them sleeping again. He 
found them sleeping again. He says, really? And he says, for their eyes were heavy, and neither wist they what to answer him. He says, I told you the secret, <clears throat> excuse me, I told you the secret of not falling asleep is to live in the Spirit. And you're still not doing that. And then he returned again. He found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. Neither wist they what, they, neither wist they what to answer him. And he cometh a third time. Three times he cometh, and he finds them sleeping. And after the third time, he's finally like, you know what? Forget it. Sleep on. And look what it says, literally. And he cometh the third time, and he said unto them, sleep on. Take your rest. It is enough. The hour is come, and behold, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise up. Let us go. And lo, he that betrayed me is at hand. I pray that when the Lord shows up, he doesn't find us sleeping, but he finds us in the Spirit, watching and praying, seeking for his kingdom and seeking for souls and, and doing our very best to live out what he's desired for us in salvation and sanctification. And so I pray today that this is encouraging to you to stay up and watch and pray. At least you fall into temptation, for the Spirit is ready, but the flesh is weak. So go forth today mildly in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and in His Spirit, and be encouraged.